Alright, so welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, the hardest career series. Today's episode, I'm going to try some of these new propeller engines, which are quite promising. I'm going to try and break the 220 meter per second airspeed record. So I'm heading to the... I've got my building right now, it's Wingswepsion, Wingswepsion Mark III. It's got one of the new engines I've got available. But well, first of all, we'll head into the aircraft hangar and I'll show you it very, very quickly. And then we'll head out to the runway. And we'll, let, we'll test fly this. Okay, so inside the aircraft hangar we have... This is the wing swiption mark. This is one that's being built right now. We have the J0-K2800 Bumblebee radial engine. It's supposed to be quite powerful. It looks quite promising on paper. You see, I've got quite a few new cockpits as well. Including the uh, Mark 1 Supersonic. I do have another version of the... Well, basically, this is an X1. It's a cableized X1 cockpit, and so is this one. But you see, engines are important, which is one part we want to be uh, looking at. So as you can see, I've got the... Let's fly it wing swept... So it's a swept back wing, delta wing. There's no control surface on this main wing. The only control surface there is, is here. It's a leading edge slat straight. So you deploy it. It can be an air brake or can also help you with your pitch control. So pitch is active. So really, the only real control we've got is this little piece of equipment and these on the tail. These are also set for, uh, well, they should be set for roll as well. That's strange. Let's take a look at that. There's nothing on there. Okay. Okay, let's see how it flies. This should give us some, a little bit of pitch control. Well, see, the best way to actually achieve a good airspeed, high airspeed, is to uh, remove as much drag as possible. Which is why I've used this rather than some rear wood, sort of bleeding edge control surfaces. Got some other promising engines. Which was that bumblebee? I think that might be... There we go. You see the performance on the um, engine yet redux readout there. That's at 3 kilometers at zero airspeed. Now 220 meters per second at the best case is about Mach 0 0.6. Not many engines continue, not many propeller engines continue at least much beyond that. In fact, most of them don't even get to that. And I think one of the biggest reasons is because of their intake. It's 1.966. That's altitude. It's quite a light engine as well. 690 kilos. With the 550, but it doesn't deliver anything like as much power. That's 52. So I'm hoping this one might be able to do it. And you see just there, it's about 79.977 kilonewtons at Mach 0.5. That is the best performing engine I've actually ever seen. That, 84.923 kilos at Mach 0.1. As we've seen already with the radial engine, this one, the D52, which is tested before in the earlier episode. It drops off quite dramatic once we reach Mach 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, it absolutely just stopped working altogether, just about. And here is the Juno. That's 20 kilonewtons. 20.6 kilonewtons at Mach 1.3. So the engine is capable of going supersonic. Which we don't really need right now. So, we're going to head out. I said there's one of these already building. Once it's being built, we should head straight to the runway and flight test this. We do have some retractable under garage. We've already seen that. We've all got the nose wheel, which I'll place on the tail for now. 
And for some reason, this undercarriage, I have to uh, spawn the aircraft on the runway with it retracted. If it's down, it bounces the aircraft into the air and sometimes gets on the over, over onto its roof. And it's a bit of a pain to try and get back onto its wheels. Okay, so for that, let's head out. Head straight to the runway and we shall test this. Okay, so from a rather cloudy runway. It's quite late in the afternoon. So we've got the control service just here. As I showed you in the aircraft hangar, the workers pitch control as well as the air brakes. Right now they're in air brake mode. Line up a little bit better. Okay, if we can get past 220 meters per second, then I shall head back to mission control and take the 220 meters per second record, airspeed record contract. So we have to be at 3,000 metres, well, at least 2,500. Okay, it's got a full throttle. So I've already programmed the... Uh, the autopilot with minus nine, minus nine meters per second. I haven't taken the contract, obviously. So I don't exactly know. I think it's, it's minus ten. You can't be climbing or descending or ascending, basically, faster than ten meters per second. So we'll leave it at nine. So that's one eighty-six. That's actually quite slow, but we are a lot higher. Okay, let's try it. I'll take it to minus You can't do that. No, nope, it's refusing to do anything. It's about one ninety. As we head in towards the uh, thicker atmosphere, we might get a little bit more power from this engine. We'll take it down to the thicker part. We can go down to about two thousand five hundred meters. Yeah, so the engine's cutting out anywhere. Yeah, so the engine just cuts out at about 200 metres a second anywhere. Oh, full throttle. Down your sensitivity a little bit. No, it's worse than ever. Okay, well, unfortunately, that's failed. Engine just cut out just as it approached 200 meters per second. So even in a, even a mild, shallow dive, the engine will just cut out. I think that's possibly, as far as propeller engines are concerned, I think that's a maximum that we're going to get out of them. It's not too bad, it was one, almost 200 metres a second before it cut out, but obviously as they go faster, 
you lose more and more power anyway. Okay, so I think what we'll do, we'll head in back into the aircraft hangar and I will swap this rather heavy cockpit for the other one we've got available right now. It's like a bubble cockpit. Okay, we have a fuel leak. Just going to get down to the ground anyway. Just going to glide it in now. Whoa! Well, we are a glider now. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, don't panic. Don't panic, Valentina. If you hit something like the ground, then you can panic. Well, it's probably too late then. Yeah, so we see liquid fuel must leak from the engine, and obviously. When that happens, the, the fuel then hits the engine, a hot part of the engine. Whoa! You. Not a bad crash landing. Okay, so fully recovered, minus one engine. Yep. Yep, no experience again. It's very strange. But we worked well on that. I've got, I've got ways to uh, fix it. Well, a few ways actually. Now the thing is, if that happens, with the, if we take a contract, and the contract stipulates that the entire aircraft has to land, well, it means it means we can't use drop tanks for fuel, we can't use detachable undercarriage, we can't use anything like that, and we also can't lose a bit of the engine, or the entire engine, or any part of the aircraft. If it fails and blows up like that, it counts as failure. At which point we lose another chunk of money. 12,000. I'm only at 54,927. Some of these parts are quite expensive. So I'm not going to take that. Just yet. Because it could bankrupt us. We do. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video. We have a uh, upgraded runway. So that's okay. Didn't take long either. Only a few weeks. Okay, so we're going to head back into the aircraft hangar and try the cockpit. Okay, so we're back in the aircraft hangar. What I'm going to do... I'm going to keep this same engine because I'm not convinced that the engine would cut out at 200 metres per second. I think it's something to do with the fact that we're pulling quite a lot of extra weight and also the aircraft itself isn't very streamlined with this cockpit. This is more like... Um, a torpedo bomber or a Stuka's sort of cockpit. It's not really built for speed, is it? But this one, the Mark One. Well, let me just display that. It's kind of just don't know. Well, this is not. So you take a look at this one. It weighs a little bit more. This is 900. Yeah, 901 kilos. This is just over. A thousand, well, one thousand thirty-one kilos. But I'm thinking this is probably more streamlined. It looks it, so we might get some better performance from it. But that happens to go that high. Okay, so what I'm gonna do? Take the wings off, take the engine off, take the tail off, take the wheels off, obviously, and switch this for this. Okay, so second attempt with the Bumblebee engine, well the, fir well, the first attempt with this bubble canopy. Just only generation one though, That's technically so is the engine anyway. Engine safety rating is two. Still pretty bad. It's got its own built-in fuel tank. Does it? 
No, it doesn't. So as it say, oh right, it air tank. So it, obviously it counts the air it can take on the engine as a tank. Oh, strange. Okay, here we go then. Full throttle. Okay, so 3,000 meters, 3 kilometers. No. He's barely, barely going to reach 195 meters a second. No, Mach point 0.6, that is the absolute limit, I think. No, we just can't get anything else out of these propeller engines. Okay, I'm gonna head back. It's pretty awesome. If we can't reach hundred if we can't reach two hundred, we won't reach we won't reach two twenty. It's about ten meters per second descent rate. It's one ninety six point nine. No. Okay, we'll head back and I shall swap this engine out for a slightly more promising one, or, well, as promising as we can possibly get with the uh, uh, propeller engine anyway. Okay, so we suffered a malfunction with the air intake. So, fortunately, can we actually fix this? No, obviously because Val's not an engineer either, so that's fine. So I'll turn that off, if it lets me. Okay, let's go ahead and recover. Okay, so no signs, obviously. We've got 38 points, and that's simply because we get size for so many build points that we use to put things together. So that's part of the R&D section. It's almost like you're refining how to put things together, so it's earning you sort of science knowledge, basically. Okay. Okay, so we've got one of the ranger we can try, which I found, which weighs roughly about the same. About the same, but it offers higher RPM on its engine on its propeller so we shall head into the aircraft tanker and I shall show you the new engine okay so the most promising engine next to the Bumblebee is actually one we've already had access to for a while it's a D52 and the reason is because it's got such a high intake at maximum it's over 3 so it's over 3 units of air per second so that means it can go much faster without being choked so sort of suffocate, well not suffocate, but being overfed, but it's force fed with air. So we shall try that, the D-52. The others have got nowhere near. I mean, you see the intake air limit there is 1.15, so the faster it goes, the slow, the less power it gets. The faster it goes, the less power it gets, I should say. So... 1.851 they all not a single one of them is as good as a bumblebee that's Mac 0.5 and 2.7 per second air so that's maximum so I don't know
So according to that station, about three kilometres, it's uh, 1.02 TWR. Slight power at Mac point seven. Zero point two three, just on well, just over nine and a half kilonewtons. So we shall take this, we shall test it. Can't knock anything off. I should be able to. Yeah, so it's five hours nineteen minutes and twenty five seconds. As long as it's finished being built, we shall head out to the runway and we shall test this. This will be the last propeller engine we try. Because these ones are nowhere near as high performance as these, these two engines. Okay, so the final time, or final attempt, with the propeller engine, the D52 radial. Break off. SES on. Seems quite promising. Gear is up. Yeah, once again, you can hear the power drop right off. Yeah, it's dropping right off again, just like before. Okay, so it looks like there's no way, it's not even going to reach anything like what the uh, Bumblebee could do. So it's not going to get to anything like the airspeed. I think it's on paper it should be able to. Now dynamically we can make it. Easily. So that's quite easy that. Oh, about two thirty three. Okay, unfortunately that's that. So that's the end of the propeller engines. If we had another one which is supercharged, which is designed to fly at much higher airspeed, air we might be able to do the 220, but actually we can't do that with the ones we've got available. Okay, so we'll head back, and we'll head back into the aircraft and we shall see what we can do with the jet engine. Okay, so this is the Kloster Asteroid. It's a Kerbalized version of the Gloucester Meteor. So we've got the two engines, two intakes. Now, a very interesting thing about jet engines compared to propeller, air uh, propeller aircraft is the fact that they gain power the faster they go. So at Mach 0.8, they actually drop off in power Right up, Mach 0.45.5. Once I've passed that, let's begin to gain power after Mach 0.6. You see TWR in the brackets there, which is 1.4, which is maximum. So the faster we go, that's Mach 1. And it's still increasing TWR. Now the things about jet engines in real life, they actually could tear themselves apart. They would destroy themselves eventually. Well, they seem to drop off after what's well, about Mach 1.4. Well, it's anybody's guess as to whether this aircraft is going to be aerodynamic enough because I'm not going to change the cockpits out because that 
pretty much does look like the proper cockpit. So I've got the control surfaces. As I said in a previous episode, I actually tested this already, but with the two kitty engines on each wing. So we have pitches active, nothing else is active on that on these two. Which is fine. But we do need some real control. I see the tail as well. Obviously, because I've got unlocked the jet engines, the same node that contains the jet engines contains the all-moving wing surface, the AVR5. We also have the AVR6. So the entire thing actually moves like inside, as you can see, it's the all-moving control surface. Which in real life was one of the sticking points of going through the sound barrier. Okay, let's put the tail on. Okay, that looks okay. Kind of a lot of extra fuel. If we want it. I don't think we're going to need it somehow. Let's see how far we actually get. 7,400. If I take those out. Oh, still 1,500, so we've got plenty of fuel. Okay, so I'm going to sort the control surfaces out. Put the uh, undercarriage on, obviously. Put the rules controls, little mini wings on the end here. Just to finish these wings, just as if the, the engines are actually sat within the wing. Like so. so I think we'll extend a little bit further here. And we'll put roll control on there. Let me show that one, test it. Okay, so as I spawned the aircraft, the uh, rudder has failed. I'm hoping we shouldn't need the rudder. We've got the wheel, well, we've got the nose wheel that steers. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so we're well over 220 meters per second, so I'm going to head back, take the contract, and hopefully nothing else breaks on the aircraft. Okay, so for the final time this episode, hopefully, I'll take to the air using the cluster mi asteroid. So hopefully nothing breaks. Okay.
Okay, so let's go up to 220 meters per second. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so back and land and claim our reward for the contract. Okay, so that's that. That's 220 meters per second. It's a little bit lag with those two engines on it. Hopefully, you could hear what I was saying during that flight and the previous one. Okay, I'm just going to put the brakes on. Contract completed. Achieve an airspeed of 220 meters per second. Congratulations, you have set a new airspeed record of 220 meters per second and returned alive. Yeah, nothing failed this time. Your success in meeting right aeronautical airspeed air challenges has Nick McCarran calling for you to see if you can help gap surmount one of the most daring airspeed challenges ever conceived. Check in with Mission Control for more details. 7,200 cash, two raw science points, and six reputation. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, recover Val. Okay, so aircraft fully recovered. No signs. All but the uh, fuel. And still, she's broken the land whale speed record. And still no experience. That's. I, I, I really just I do really under, not understand anything that's going on here. It, she should have got some experience. She's done absolutely tons, and nothing, no ribbons. Okay. All right, that's the end of this episode. So that's two hundred twenty meters per second. Previous episode we also exceeded ten thousand meters. So next challenge, as far as airspeed is concerned, is. Yeah, so break the air, this baton barrier. So achieve Mach 1 basically. And the next altitude is 20 kilometers. So that's what we'll be working towards from the next episode onwards. Alright. I won't take those just yet. Those guys have caused a crash bomb building up my uh, bank balance between this episode and the next one. Okay, but however, that is the end of this episode. Alright, so hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to click like, it's appreciated. Don't forget if you want to make a comment or a question, by all means, don't forget the entire mod list is in the description section of the playlist. I've also included the Realism Overhaul series on my channel as well, in the description section underneath each of the videos as well. If you want to go and check those out. Alright, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, don't forget to have Discord, we have Facebook and we have Twitter. I found a link to all three of those particular platforms on the banner on the front page of the channel. In the meantime, as always, take care and bye-bye.